The Nintendo Switch isn't exactly known for its vast array of pew pew, bang bang, shooty, gun wielding games. Sure, you've got the obvious things like Fortnite and the half-baked version of Apex Legends, but there's always been this kind of hole in the Switch's library. And as usual with Nintendo systems, it's up to Nintendo themselves to fill that void. And in true Nintendo style, they've come up with something super unique, Splatoon. Can you guys imagine the pitch meeting for the first game in this series? We would like to make a first party shooter. <laughs> a game with guns? We can't do that to our family friendly image. No, 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 wait for it, wait for it. What if instead of bullets, we used paint. Go on. And instead of shooting other people, you shoot the ground. Mm. And then, and then, you're always on a team, so you always have friends, but your friends are squids. <gasps> Shut up and take my money. Isn't this just classic Nintendo though? Let's make a gun-toting paint fight game where everyone's a squid kid and then we'll turn it into the ultimate shooter experience for multiple console generations. It's an idea so crazy that it just might work. And we're here today to tell you that it most definitely has worked. Splatoon is a work of art, no paint pun intended, and it is just a whole bucket load of fun. As of writing this approximately three weeks into Splatoon 3's lifespan, it has sold almost 2.5 million copies in Japan alone and has topped the UK sales charts comfortably since its release. This third entry in the franchise has cemented Splatoon as one of Nintendo's big four next to Mario, Zelda and Animal Crossing. This is an insane feat for a series that has been around for what, like seven years? The fact that the Big N considers it as important as its tried and true long running games is crazy. And it proves that the company still has it in them to craft a mega hit. So we've touched on it a little bit, but for those of you who aren't familiar with the game, we'll go over what it's all about. Your main draw card in Splatoon is a game mode called Turf War. And this is where 99% of people will spend 90% of their time with the game. In Turf War, it's the aim of the game to cover as much of the field as possible with your team's ink color. It's a pretty simple concept really, just paint the floor. Kills actually count for exactly no points here. Sure, the player will take a few seconds to respawn, potentially giving you a better chance to ink over some of their color, but ultimately it counts for nothing. This simple gameplay loop is so much fun and Splatoon owes a huge portion of its success to this mode. Again, classic Nintendo with its wholesome fun, but it also offers something many online games, especially shooters, can't, a low skill entry level. While many shooters such as COD or Fortnite require so many hours of practice and a high level of knowledge or skill to become even the slightest bit competitive in, Splatoon can offer even the freshest of players the top spot in their team. Anybody has the ability to simply splatter paint on everything they possibly can. We have lost matches before because veteran players just held us out of the middle of the map by sniping us every time we went near it. But we also regularly get the MVP award when we've killed or splattered absolutely no one. No matter your knowledge, you can be competitive and have a good time doing so. For many people, Turf War is Splatoon. But let's just say PvP isn't really your thing. You don't like competitive gameplay and the idea of versing other people is a little daunting. Well, how about we team up with those other people instead? Salmon Run is probably Splatoon 3's second most popular mode. Here you'll team up with three other players to take down the nasty salmonids and collect their eggs. I love me a good piece of salmon and it's from as much as the next guy, but trust me when I say these fishies do not look tasty. Only the biggest and ugliest of these salmonids will yield eggs for your team, so the aim is to work together to take them down while also avoiding the endless waves of their underlings. This is cooperative play at its finest. Now, if only we could get some actual voice chat to make the whole thing that much better. In Splatoon 2, you could only salmon run on like Saturdays or something for some weird reason. So turning this mode from an in-game event to an actual game mode you can play at any time is one of the big draw cards for Splatoon 3. But what if you don't have regular access to the internet or your mum just won't buy your Nintendo Online subscription? Or maybe you just don't like playing with other people in general? Either way, luckily for you, Splatoon 3 also has a story mode. Look, this isn't exactly groundbreaking or anything. 
You jump in and out of levels from a hub world collecting power eggs so that your little buddy can literally chow down on some fur. I think I'd actually rather eat the salmonids. Story mode is definitely a nice extra and it is interesting enough that we probably will end up putting in the eight hours or so to beat it, but it's definitely not the best thing Splatoon 3 has to offer. If your mum still won't get you an online subscription after this, then maybe just get another game. Many people are gonna see Splatoon 3 as a perfect way to attack Nintendo. Their premier shooter and their premier online experience is all about throwing paint around. What a childish concept. What a kid's game. The Switch isn't even a real video games console. It's a kid's toy. And to the people who say this, we just wanna ask you, are you like anti-fun or something? Do you like enjoy causing online drama? Do you just enjoy being miserable? Because it, it kind of seems like it. Don't get us wrong, it's fine to not like certain games. We're actually not big fans of the shooter genre at all. We know that we're in the minority here, but bang bang shooter maps just aren't really our thing. But holy crap do we love Splatoon. Now this isn't to say Splatoon is only a good shooter if you don't like shooters. We have a few friends who love Halo and they regularly stream games like Fortnite and they also, holy crap, love Splatoon. Splatoon is just a game for everyone, and the fact that we usually don't like the genre that it's part of only solidifies the fact that it's obviously done something right. Whether it's the unique concept or the incredibly addictive gameplay loop, there is no doubt that Nintendo has created something special that deserves to be held on a pedestal next to Mario and Zelda. But that's not to say Splatoon 3 is without its problems, because it most definitely has some major issues. The first one for us is a lack of split screen of any kind. We actually only ever played Splatoon 2 through Nintendo's online game trials. And granted, we did put like 40 something hours into it in that one week alone, but we still couldn't justify purchasing the game twice so that we could actually play it together. Even if it's just one mode that could be played split screen, give us like the equivalent of COD Zombies or something. We understand that this is a pretty niche issue, but options are never a bad thing. We've obviously taken the plunge this time and we do have two copies of Splatoon 3, but it was a pretty big decision to make spending $160 on one game. It is a lot of money, man. The worst problem though, and one that everybody is guaranteed to run into, is the freaking connection issues. There is no doubt in my mind that everybody will experience a connection loss and be kicked out of a matchmaking lobby multiple times a play session. I do, I do know why. You do? Damn it. Our record is actually four times in a row. Four times in a row, man. Stupid. Nintendo just really need to sort out their online servers, man. It is so frustrating. Honestly, that Lucky Splatoon 3 is so fun because we might have just given up if the game was any worse. The issues are really just that bad. We just hope that Nintendo saw their shit out before it turns too many people off. Issues aside though, Splatoon 3 is easily the ultimate shooter experience on the Switch. And if I had to use one word to sum it up, it would be fun. We've just had so much of it with Splatoon 3 and we don't see it getting old anytime soon. For the Switch to be on the road to becoming the highest selling console of all time without the support of a single Call of Duty or a modern GTA is insane. And it just goes to show that these companies just need to back themselves. Nintendo has created such a unique experience in a genre where the games can start to feel a little samey. If you also like Splatoon 3, then why don't you head over and follow us on Twitch? Every Saturday we have Community Day, where we play games with you guys. And recently, our game of choice for this day has been none other than Splatoon 3. We would love to ink some turf with you. So the links to our Twitch channel, as well as all of our other socials, will be in the description below. Hit that like button, Super Smash Brothers that subscribe button, leave a comment, and most importantly, make sure you come back next week for some more fun Nintendo related content. Bye! Oh, what the f are you doing? Miso! Can you, can you like. Miso? What? <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs>